Hi, Dr. Riaz Arga here, consultant plastic surgeon at Harley Clinic Group. So here on Harley Street, I often get people asking about different types of breast implants. And one of the things that they ask about, what are the different kinds of options that they have? What are the different things that they can look at? So in terms of the implant characteristics, one of the things are is profile. So you can have a low, medium and high profile, for instance. You know, different companies use different language, but essentially it's how much it projects out. You've also got textures. So you can have a textured implant versus a more nano textured or smoother implant. And also you can have the feet of the implant, how soft it is, how, how well filled it is and how it feels inside with your hand. I often get patients to actually feel the implant because that's what's actually going to be going inside so they need to be comfortable with how it feels. So really the, the size is important so you know of these three implants the biggest one is actually this one here which is the lowest profile is 400 cc's and that's because it's big this is 13.5 centimeters base width whereas this is much smaller 11.5 centimeters so the overall cc's of this is big and it's for a bigger chest than this one. And where you've got two implants which are very similar base width, you've got different projections, that's how much you want the implant to come out. And so that's really a shape issue. You've got size, you've got texture, you've got profile, all of which I've discussed. And then you've also got the shape of the implant. So you can have a round implant, which is equal in every dimension. And you can also have an anatomical implant where, or a shaped implant, which will look a lot more like like, although this is a round implant, it will look a lot more teardrop like and it will have a different length width ratio and you can change those and have those different for uh, anatomical implants. So it's important if say you've got somebody who's really tall or really short and you actually want to have a different uh, height and width of the implant. One problem with anatomical implants is obviously if you've got a different length width and it rotates then it can immediately look different one side from another. So it necessitates a reoperation usually to reposition that so that can be a difficulty. Most people will be using round implants most of the time. So Shape is another consideration as well as texture and size and profile of the implant. And then finally, it comes to what it's filled with. I've talked about different how it feels and the different degree of filling with silicone, but you can also have a silicone implant or you can have a saline implant. And in this country, typically in the UK, we'd be using silicone implants the vast majority of the time. In America, saline implants are very important. Um, so they are filled with um, what we call saline, which is a salt solution, and they tend to be a lot softer they have more risk of rupture and saline leaking whereas silicone doesn't tend to do that so it's not really an option that we have here in this country as much we tend to use silicone implants we tend to use saline or saline chambered implants merely more for expansion of our breast over time by introducing more and more saline and that's what we call an expander so those are the main kinds of breast implant characteristics the other thing to think about in terms of breast augmentation as a whole is not just the implant but also how it's going to be placed where is the incision going to be made? So I typically would use a inframammary fold incision, which is underneath the breast. So it's usually a small incision, about two of these parts of my finger there, it's about four centimeters, three to four centimeters in size. And that will be in the inframammary fold. Um, some people can go via the nipple. Some people more in Latin America go via the armpit to have a more concealed approach. So they all have their pros and cons, but I like going through the inframammary fold as it gives me good access to the pocket which I'm going to be placing the implant in. The other thing that is important is which plane you're going to be placing the implant in. Are you going to go above the muscle or below the muscle? And I'll have a separate video discussing the pros and cons of each of those approaches. Finally, I think it's really important to speak to your surgeon, not just about the kind of implant they're going to use, the incision, and whether they're going above or below the muscle, dependent on your particular anatomy, goals and desires, and past history. But also, what is their track record in terms of complications? their before and afters, look at their reviews and speak to other patients they may have operated on and see how um, you like their results. Get, start having a conversation and feel free to see many surgeons and make a decision then based on what you like best and whom you like best.